All right. Hey, we are going to begin the live Q and A. Um, my name is First Lieutenant Tom Point, and the United States Military Academy. So, can first off, can you guys hear me? Awesome. All right. So we will begin. Um, I know there are some students that are still going to be joining, but um, you guys can certainly rewatch this video if you guys missed it. And uh, we'll begin. So I'm going to cover just a little bit about me so you guys can have a better understanding. Um, so my name is First Lieutenant Tom Lay. Graduated from the class of 2016. I majored in environmental science as well as uh, engineering, environmental engineering, and I branched, branched medical service corps. Um, so I'm not your typical uh, West Point traditional applicant, I would say. Uh, I had somewhat of a different route. So out of high school, I actually applied to a civilian college, civilian university. I went to the University of Minnesota, Twin Cities, and shortly afterwards, I enlisted as a combat medic for almost two years in the Minnesota National Guard. Um, and it wasn't until that I actually enlisted that I found out what West Point was. And the reason why I chose West Point was I was interested in continuing my education um, as well as pursuing a career in the medical field. At the time, I wanted to be a army physician. And in order to be an army physician, you had to become an officer. And so at that point, there was three routes for me, at least in the army. One was going to ROTC, two was doing OCS, and the third was going to a service academy, and this was West Point. So I, I looked into West Point a little bit more and was able to um, read about it online, but still there was a lot of confusion. So I actually reached out to my admissions officer, one who worked primarily with um, prior service soldiers, and they helped me through the process. And um, I got accepted to 20, 2012, and I did four years there, graduated 2016, and like I said, Branch Medical Service Corps. Um, my first job, I ended up doing a treatment and evacuation platoon leader uh, at 1st Infantry Division, Fort Riley, Kansas, uh, in 163 Armor Regiment. I also did a short time frame with 299 Brigade Support Battalion. During these 18 months, I'd say nine months was on Fort Riley. The other remaining time frame, oh, give me one second real quick. All right, technical difficulty. Sorry about that, guys. All right, can you guys still hear me? Okay, we're gonna make this work. All right, so we're gonna keep on going here. All right, so went over to Poland. That's where you see in this, this photo here. Uh, went to Germany and came back, got an opportunity to switch jobs. I ended up becoming an environmental science engineer officer, as you can see in this photo down below. Got stationed at Fort Sam Houston for about 11 months, close to a year and then got an opportunity to come back to West Point as an outreach officer in the Directorate of Admissions. 
So as you can see here, some of my hobbies about their time before, during, and after West Point, and kind of some of the lessons they've learned throughout their time, and what kind of wisdom that they can pass on to students, as well as um, other military officers. I can move this over just a little bit. So you guys can better see this here. All right, so the mission at West Point. So it brings us here today to learn more about West Point. So our mission at West Point is to educate, train, and inspire the Corps of Cadets so that each graduate is a commissioned leader of character, committed to the values of duty, honor, country, and prepared for career professional excellence in service to the nation as an officer in the United States Army. So two things I want to take away here. One being that each graduate will commission as an officer in the United States Army upon graduation from West Point. From West Point, you will incur five years of service as an active duty Army officer. And I think that is pretty incredible because you have your guaranteed full-time job for five years after you graduate, where you get to apply all the knowledge that you've learned at your four years at West Point. The second thing I want to take away is each graduate is a commissioned leader of character. This is very, this is very unique and this is something that West Point does very well. Um, we create leaders of character um, and how we do that is through this. We develop you guys in four different domains, the academic domain, the physical domain, the military domain and the character component, all of which, which develop leaders of character. You guys can see in the bottom right here, this is our cadet honor code. A cadet will not lie, cheat, steal, tolerate those who do. And that's something that we as not only cadets, but graduates, army officers all live by. And we hold each other to the same standard. All right, so here are some institutional rankings as far as how West Point fares uh, from 2019 as well as 2018. You guys can see we're reported in the US News World Report, Princeton Review, Forbes, and College Factual. As the United States Military Academy, we are the number one public liberal arts college. We also are the number one most accessible professors. And this is something that I can truly attest to. Um, on the first day of class, both fall and spring semester, your instructors will write their personal cell phone numbers as well as their emails and make themselves available at all times um, of the day. And um, there are multiple times where maybe you had a question um, on homework or something that you didn't understand as far as concepts prior to an exam. Um, students often call their instructors in the middle of the night, maybe not too late, but um, in the evenings and the instructors would usually be able to pick up and answer any questions that they may have. It's also pretty nice that a lot of these professors also live on posts, so you can certainly get additional instruction that way as well. Um, and outside of the accessibleness, um, they've actually become great mentors, both professionally and personally throughout the years. Many of my teachers who have I, I've had as a cadet, while I was still a cadet, I still keep in touch with them to this day, and they've certainly been great mentors throughout the years. As far as our academic program, the faculty, we have 50% active duty army officers. They actually go and get their masters. That way they can get the most cutting edge 
uh, academic information and bring that to the academy. The remaining 50% are broken up between civilian professors and active duty army officers, which are permanently assigned. This is more for uh, continuity wise, and usually they are the department heads. Our civilian professors usually will have masters and most of them will have PhDs. As far as class sizes goes, they're pretty small. Um, you can see here it's 15, 18. I've seen some as low as nine. And this is pretty incredible because it allows for small uh, class sizes, excellent group discussion, and more one-on-one -on -one engagement with your instructors. Here is a list of the majors that we offer. Uh, we have over 35 different majors, 15 minors, and 13 different academic departments. As you can see, it's pretty diverse in nature. Um, we have everything from American politics, economics, engineering management, philosophy, physics, systems engineering. Um, so there's a lot that you can do, especially if you have a lot of different interests. You can certainly double major. I've heard of someone triple majoring while I was at West Point. Um, you can certainly do a major and a minor. So there's a lot to choose from, uh, especially if uh, there's something that you're interested in. As far as a military school, we have the military development side. So your freshman summer, so the summer prior to getting to West Point, we have what's called cadet basic training. It's six weeks long, and it's an opportunity for you to transform from a high school civilian into a cadet at West Point. We'll teach you the Army values and the Army culture, as well as the Army lingo. Uh, you have an opportunity to learn different facing movements, the rank structure, West Point history, as well as an opportunity to learn more about the military side of things. So you'll get to do some land navigation, mountaineering, bas basic marksmanship, which is essentially how to operate uh, a, a weapon, clean a weapon, uh, take it apart, first aid, and by the end of the six weeks, you will be formally accepted into the core as a plebe. Freshmen are called plebe. So that following summer, uh, sophomores, rising sophomores, otherwise rising yearlings, go into what's called as a four week cadet field training. This field training builds on the previous summer with advanced marksmanship advanced land navigation, as well as uh, many other military training events. What's key about this summer is that after you finish, you become essentially a, a leader in the Corps. You'll have an opportunity to be in charge of one plebe that academic year. So it's a pretty cool opportunity. I'm gonna cover more about the individual advanced development opportunities, but you'll also have another four week block to do that this summer. For your second um, to last summer as well as your your, your first C summer, um, you'll this I call this the either or slide. You'll see cadet troop leader training and cadet leader development training twice. And so cadet troop leader training is essentially the army internship. You get an opportunity to shadow a second or first lieutenant in the active duty army at, and you get an opportunity to see how they operate before branching and commissioning as an officer. So you get to see different duty stations, um, different branches, different jobs, and see if it's a good fit for you. Uh, I personally got to go to South Korea one summer and shadow a military police company I got to qualify on a sniper rifle and follow along on a sniper reconnaissance team. It was pretty cool. Um, as well as after that, you'll have an opportunity to do cadet leader development training, which I would say is the pinnacle summer military training that you do, where you apply all the military knowledge that you've learned throughout your, your couple years at West Point 
and execute it real time. You get to lead your peers in small platoon operations. I would say this is one of the hardest trainings that um, is simulated as realistically possible to what you would do on active duty. Um, but it will certainly push you and you'll learn to identify what your limits are. As far as military leadership schools go, these are some of the schools that we offer throughout the summer while you're at West Point. The most common ones are airborne and air assault. You'll see most cadets that graduate from West Point will either have one or the other, uh, or sometimes even both. To the left here, this is what air assault is. You get to rappel out of a helicopter about 100 to 150 feet in the air, uh, which is what I did after my freshman year. Or you get to do airborne, which you get to jump out of planes uh, with these parachutes here. And we also offer multiple other military leadership schools as well, as you can see. SEER, Sapper, French Commando, uh, Chilean Mountaineering, Brazilian Mountaineering, and you get to go to these different countries to, to do some of these. These are more competitive, um, definitely limited in slots, um, but a very unique opportunity to go to these schools because they're far, they're hard to come by, especially once you're active duty. So throughout your summers, you get an opportunity to also do these academic enrichment op opportunities abroad. So we send students all over the world and you get to participate in semester abroad where you can go to different countries and learn different languages. You can do internships at the FBI, the CIA, the Pentagon. You can do research at Walter Reed and um, different hospitals or you can do humanitarian work in um, developing countries. So there was one summer where I had an opportunity to go to Haiti for two weeks, and I got to work in a small village with um, a local orphanage, and that was a really unique opportunity. Um, another summer, um, I, I, I got an opportunity to go to Bethesda, Maryland, and do some research on MRSA. So very unique. Um, question about this is this is absolutely free. You don't have to pay a single dime for you to go. You just have to have the interest and the time to do it. So as important as the academic side and the military side, physical fitness is also very important as well. As you can see, these are some of the classes that you'll have to take as a plebe, yearling, cow, and firstie. Um, again, what we're trying to teach here is mental toughness, developing grit, um, challenging yourself in different domains, and being able to overcome your fear and eventually those obstacles that come along with that. So the idea that every cadet and athlete is absolutely true. Um, we want to be able to, again, to um, develop sportsmanship, right? developing being a member of a team, uh, developing confidence, and also the culture of winning. So we have 28 uh, NCAA sports, otherwise D1, 16 club sports, otherwise considered competitive sports, and then we have 11 company athletics, which are intramurals. And uh, while you're at West Point, you're gonna be participating in one of these. And there's so many different sports um, that whatever your interests are, there's probably a sport at West Point that will fulfill um, your needs and desire. All right, so this is the meat and potatoes of the brief. I'm going to give you guys a couple of minutes real quick. I'm going to see if I can set up the camera again just so you guys can see me. You guys still with me here? OK. 
Okay. So my apologies on this. Just want to fix this real quick. All right. All right, we're back in business, guys. All right, so the whole candidate concept. When we are looking at your overall application, we're looking at you holistically as a well-rounded candidate. We're gonna be looking at your academic ability, your leadership potential, and your overall fitness. Now, if there's anything that's gonna, something that you have to remember from this, this Q&A, or this entire video, is going to be this slide right here. So, this is our evaluation process when we look at your overall application. So 60% of it is going to be based on academics. We're going to be looking at your high school class rank. So we're going to see how well you do compared to the rest of your peers locally. We're going to be looking at your SATs and your ACTs. So how well you compare to your peers at a national level. Um, a reminder is that when you do take the SAT and the ACT, is that you guys take the essay portion with that standardized exam. We can't, um, we can't take your, your score unless we have the essay that comes along with it. So be sure to check off the essay part when you guys do the standardized exam. And then the last thing for the academic side of it is to turn in your transcripts. So what we're looking for in your transcripts by the end of your four years is gonna be four years of uh, math. So you also have pre-calculus and trig. Uh, we're gonna look at four years of English, two years of science, so chemistry and physics, and then preferably two years of language arts, or uh, I'm sorry, of a foreign language, completely different. So again, at this time, if you're the class of applying for the class of 2024, going to need to see at least six semester transcripts. So all the way up until junior year. And would, if you guys can get that in right now, we would highly prefer that. Um, the same thing with your SAT and your ACT exams. So if you guys don't already have that on file, start turning those in um, as and if you haven't don't have it at, haven't taken it all yet start registering um, the registration date is usually about a month before the actual exam just so you guys are tracking on that all right so after the academics the next 30 percent is going to be the leadership side so in the leadership side we're looking at three things we're looking at your extracurriculars we're looking at your athletic participation and your school official evaluations. Uh, we're gonna need at least four school official evaluations. These are gonna be your letters of recommendations. One is gonna be from your science teacher, so your most recent chemistry or physics teacher. One is gonna be from your math teacher, so preferably the most recent pre-calc or trig teacher. Your third one is gonna be from your English teacher, 
and then your fourth one is going to be from your PE teacher. Again, you choose these teachers. So, you know, choose the teachers that have kind of seen your development and um, can talk on behalf of you, your, your character, your development. Um, so the school official evaluations, the teachers actually don't actually write out your letter of recommendation. You actually put in their email addresses. It'll get sent to them. They'll fill out the form digitally and then they'll submit it. As far as extracurricular activities and your athletic participation, um, many students like to uh, participate in a lot of different sports or a lot of different extracurriculars, and which there's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, but just understand how much time you can commit to a club and how much you want to be able to show um, commitment, dedication, and, and taking on leadership positions. I personally would say um, it's better to take on three clubs where you have more of an active role, a, a leadership role, whether you're a president, vice president, treasurer, or secretary, um, than to join 14 different clubs and you're only a general member and you've only probably only been there for six months. So just kind of think about that when you guys are um, managing your time. Same thing with athletic participation. Um, you can take on um, a captain, co-captain position, you know, going from JV to varsity. Um, and that certainly shows uh, greater leadership potential than just being a player. The last 10% is going to be on your candidate fitness assessment. And so we're going to be assessing your physical aptitude through six different exercises. The basketball throw, the modified sit-up, which essentially is a crunch, 40-yard um, shuttle run, one-mile run, pull-ups or the flex arm hang, and the push-ups. So big thing with this is that you have to submit a video of the push-ups and the pull-ups or the flex arm hang. And the thing with this is we have to see your full body and you also have to be able to identify yourself in the video so we know that it's you that's doing the CFA or actually doing the push-ups and the pull-ups. Who can administer this? It can be your PE teacher. If you are in JRTC, your SAI can do that. Um, an, an Army officer can administer and so can a non-commissioned officer. If there's a local field force, they can also do that as well. At this time, I'm going to pause and I'm actually going to take questions for the evaluation process because I would say this is one of the most important parts of the admissions process. And I'm actually going to look through what you guys are asking right now. Okay, so um, just to go off of what Alex said about doing a CFA for one of the other academies, you're absolutely right. If, if you took the CFA at another academy for their SLE or their Summer Leaders Seminar uh, and you passed it, we can take those scores, but we still need the videos of the push-ups and the pull-ups or the flex arm hang. So that is the caveat to that. Okay, let's see. Kenneth is all over it. Our website, the CFA packet does have the averages as well as the maxes for you to understand where you need to gauge in order to pass the CFA. All right, Colin asks, can we use any teacher or does it have to be one of those subjects? So again, the school official evaluations, it's going to be math teacher, English teacher, science teacher, and a PE teacher, physics teacher.
In terms of the SAT, what would you say is a good source, good score to aim for? So, um, one, we don't disclose what the minimum scores are for the SAT and the ACT. And the reason being is that we want our students to shoot for the best they can do. We don't want them to shoot just for the minimum. That's not, some, that's not something that we're about at the academy, and we hope that you guys uh, strive to do your best because we know you guys can. Samuel is in the Marine Corps ROTC. Yes, your, your SMI can administer the CFA. Um, and again, so here are gonna, here's a couple dates that you guys should know for those that are applying for the class of 2024. August 1st is going to be when the second part of your application is going to open. So this means this is where you can start doing medical qualifications, uploading those CFA videos, school official evaluations, candidate statements. They're going to be short essays and, and the rest of that application. The second date you guys should know is going to be January 31st. This is the application deadline. Um, for class of 2024 so it would be who of you guys to plan in advance backwards plan and try to get all of your stuff in before well before January 31st the reason being is that you want to have enough of buffer window in order to retake any exams that you need to take or um, practice for the CFA again or have time um, to follow up as far as documentation goes for medical. Medical is one of the biggest things that holds up a lot of students. Um, it's not necessarily just the scheduling, um, the initial scheduling, but it's following up. So if something comes up in your guys' medical evaluation and they require more medical documentation, that's just more time that's it's going to take for your application to be finished so just be aware of that start as early as you can and uh, be very proactive again I tell all my students this like before the end of the summer you guys should already have your transcripts turned in at least six semesters you guys should have your SAT and your ACT scores in with the writing portion you should have already begun the nomination process or, or nearly finishing it as well as um, conduct practicing and conducting your CFA Four things for the summer because once August rolls around which is in two weeks um, that next part of the application is gonna open up and you're gonna begin school you're probably gonna start the sports season so you're gonna be so busy All right, so now I'm gonna answer some more questions. So Julian asks, if I take anatomy and physiology honors, can I use that as a letter of recommendation for science or does it have to be physics? So Julian, so it has to be from your physics or chemistry teacher. If you can't get a hold of them for whatever reason, um, we can then begin to start looking at different teachers within the science realm. All right, Israel asks, if I took chemistry and bio in my first two years of high school in the respective AP class for those courses in my junior, senior year, would you re recommend taking a physics class? So just so you guys know, your freshman year at West Point, you guys are going to be taking chemistry, biology, and then you will take a, a sequence in physics uh, following on that. So to best prepare for those courses is to have some familiarity, right? To have some foundational knowledge. So if you've already taken it, taken it in high school, then that's good foundation for that following year. If you haven't taken it, I would recommend um, enrolling in it. That way you will have that foundational knowledge to carry on throughout that, that class when you're at West Point. So what are good tips for anyone trying to apply for the class of 2025? So I'm going to say this with, especially for the class of 2024, because that's ongoing right now. The best tips is start early, apply early and be proactive. So if you guys can get in as much stuff as you can get in early, you're going to build enough of a window 
to follow up with anything that you need to continue working on. I think that's one of the best things. Also is to continue following along on this chart here, the evaluation process. 60% academics, 30% leadership, 10% CFA. If you're focusing your entire summer to max out the CFA when it's only 10%, you still have 60 and 30% here, which is gonna be a lot more damage that you can do if you focused on that. So again, balance your, balance your summer and manage your time wisely and focus your efforts on where you think it's gonna have more an effect on your overall evaluation. So Victoria asks, in regards to athletic participation, what if the individual's work schedules interfere? Would this make a difference? That's actually a great question. We actually have a lot of students who also work, um, are employed. And so it's not gonna substitute for the athletic participation. We do understand that um, you do have a job um, there's going to be a part in your application where you can talk about your work experience. Um, but we still want to see that you guys are still being physically fit, that you still continuously challenge yourself and pushing yourself in the physical realm. And when I say athletic participation, it doesn't mean that you have to be playing varsity sports. It doesn't mean you have to be playing um, JV or for the high school. Um, we're also looking at anything that is physically related, um, even if you're doing intramurals as well. Uh, that certainly counts. But again, we're, we're looking at a holistic base on a holistic assessment of you as a person and recognize that maybe you don't have enough time to do all this, but this is something that we are looking for. We're looking for the academics, we're looking for the leadership, and we're looking for the physical fitness. Any other questions in regards to the evaluation process? All right, so moving on. So the next part is your, your medical side, right? So in order to go to West Point, you also have to qualify physically and mentally by going through a physical examination, a vision screening, as well as a hearing exam. Um, this is gonna be evaluated by the Department of Defense Medical Examination Review Board. And you'll either be qualified disqualified or remedial, which is where there, it's a pending status asking for additional documentation. Big thing with this is April 15th is gonna be the deadline for medical. The reason being is that medical takes a long time. So again, start this process as soon as your application opens. Schedule an appointment with a provider um, as soon as you can and see that provider and, and do what you need in order to qualify. All right, I'm gonna go back because I got three questions. All right, Israel. If I was a team captain on my summer travel ball team, but not on my high school team, can I count that? Absolutely. That's something that you, you did, um, not only throughout the academic year, but throughout summer, and I'd say that counts. Peyton, for the whole candidate score, do they look highly upon volunteering and service hours? I would say that is also going to be a consideration within um, your application. So just like there's work experience, volunteering and service hours also count as well. Nam asks, would it be beneficial to take multiple AP classes? So. What we're looking for again in your transcripts is going to be um, that we're seeing progression, we're seeing development, we're seeing that you're continuously pushing yourself and um, that you're challenging yourself with different classes. So if, if you took on more AP classes and you're able to do well in them, then of course, yeah, you'd best perform. Simon asked, if I were to enlist as a high school junior in the National Guard, would I be considered prior service for admissions? Yes, you would be considered prior service 
if you complete basic training. And if you do, you then qualify for a prior service nomination, which is one more nomination on top of the other four that everyone qualifies for, which I'm going to get to um, shortly. And Kenneth, um, regarding the medical waiver, um, I, I actually can't speak too much on that just because we're not the ones that conduct the medical exams. It's Again, it's done by Department of Defense Medical Examination Review Board, and they have their own process of how they qualify each candidate. All right, so nominations. So everyone here, to include everyone that is applying, will qualify for four nominations right off the bat. It's going to be one from your local congressman, which with whatever district that you reside in, two from your senators from whichever state that you reside in, and then one from the vice president for living in the U.S. So when your portal opens in August, you can go to the nomination tab and you can identify who's going to be your representative. And from there, you'll be able to click on the link. It'll take you directly to the representative's website. It'll have their instructions, their deadline, which is different for every representative, and you can apply through there. Again, the application portal, um, it's, it's open as soon as you finish your candidate questionnaire, which was on January 15th but the second part of the application will open up in August. All right, so the second part of the nominations, we talked about the four here. So before I move on, I highly encourage all candidates to apply for all four. Um, reason being is that you're gonna be competing against different candidates in each pool. So the vice president one, right? You're gonna be competing against everyone in the US for this vice presidential nomination. But if you don't apply for the House of Representatives nomination, your local congressman, um, you're not gonna be able to compete with only the students from your district. So that's important to distinguish and you'll have a better chance of receiving a nomination um, if you apply for all four. Again, you only need one to get accepted to West Point. All right, so we have service-connected nominations, and there's five of these. These are on top of the congressional nominations. So if you are the son or daughter of a career military uh, personnel, so uh, let's say your mother or f father served on active duty for eight consecutive years or longer, you qualify for a presidential nomination. Um, if they're currently in the reserves, they have to have greater than 2,880 points. Or if they retired and they're in good standing, you also qualify for the presidential nomination. The only thing we need from this is going to be a statement of service if they're currently serving or a DD-214, uh, which shows that they did serve. And this is something that they'll be able to retrieve. Um, on top of that, there's also another form that's going to be within your portal. It's a PDF that you can uh, digitally fill out and just check uh, presidential nomination. Uh, we had a question for soldiers. So if you're active duty, National Guard, or Reserve, you can also apply for this service-connected nomination, and it's going to be an endorsement from your commander. If you're in ROTC or you're in JROTC, um, your SAI can actually nominate you, and that is a, an additional nomination. In the past, I guess some students didn't know that, but your SAI can certainly nominate you uh, to go to West Point. Um, again, if it's not Army, it has to be an honor unit with distinction. And then lastly, um, if your mother or father is deceased, 100% VA disabled, or a Medal of Honor recipient, then you also qualify for these other two nominations. All right, so 
We talked about this earlier. This is the deadline. Files must be complete by January 31st. If you qualify academically, physically, medically, and you receive a nomination, you're going to be a happy camper like all these students listed here. If you guys want to visit West Point, get to tour and see the beautiful campus, um, this is how you can schedule a visit. If you go to our website, westpoint.edu slash admissions slash visit West Point, or you call this number here. Um, you can visit Monday through Friday and get an opportunity to see what um, the Academy has to offer. You can talk to us as admissions officers. You can, if it's during the academic year, you can see cadets. You can see the marches and the parades and uh, just the history behind West Point. And this is my contact information. So this is my email. This is my phone number. If you guys have any questions at all regarding the application process, more than happy to talk to you guys. Many of you guys know I'm, I'm always available to answer those questions. Um, and I'm more than happy to do so. So let's go back to some of the questions here and see if I can, can answer them. What is the core curriculum for all four years as a cadet? That's a good question. Most of the core curriculum is going to be um, conducted during your freshman and sophomore year as they are the general classes that everyone has to take. Um, it's, it's going to be a series of math, English, science, uh, PE, a military class at the fundamental level. And then it just gets deeper and more advanced throughout the rest of the years. But of course, after that, once you become a sophomore, um, I think in your spring year of your plebe year, your, your freshman year, you get an opportunity to select your major. And from there, you get to select uh, deeper level classes of the classes that you're interested in. And so you build upon that throughout the rest of the years. And Cameron asks, how do I prepare for interviews? This is a great question and it doesn't only pertain to your congressional nomination interview, but I would say, um, you know, be punctual, right? So that doesn't mean show up at the exact time, but it means showing up early, making sure you have all the documents that you need. Uh, you look professional, um, well prepared, uh, probably rehearsed a couple times as far as what, what do you think they would be asking you? So maybe like, well, why did you consider West Point? Did you apply to any other service academies? What does it mean to, um, to serve, uh, to be a leader? Um, and they're probably going to ask you, um, what was some difficult obstacle that you had to experience and how did you overcome that? And so just kind of think about some of these questions. Um, but the most important part about it is to be yourself and you want to be genuine. You want to be authentic and you don't want to walk in there sounding like a robot. You want to show your personality. You want to show that, um, you're different and memorable from the other candidates that are applying as well. And lastly, don't, don't forget to smile and thank them um, for, for allowing to interview you and follow up with a thank you note. I think that's, that's really important. And then I'll leave a, a nice uh, gesture. I will be in Georgia. I don't have my calendar on me, but I will be in Georgia and I will be visiting. So when I am on the road, I would love to see you guys in person and be able to uh, answer any questions you guys may have, maybe look over your file, um, meet your parents if they're there as well. And uh, yeah. Does obtaining an IB diploma help in any way with getting accepted into West Point? I would say no, I would say it's certainly a consideration, but it's not going to have greater weight than any other student that is applying uh, just the traditional route. 
as far as walk on sports goes, um, there is going to be an opportunity during cadet basic training for some sports that uh, allow you to try out. Um, not all sports offer that, but um, there is going to be a day during cadet basic training for you to do that. If you're interested in uh, the sports area, you can go to um, GoArmySports.com. Let me see real quick. GoArmyWestPoint.com. GoArmyWestPoint.com. And you can look at what sports are available as well as the contact information um, for some of the staff that works each one of those. <clears throat> and uh, you can reach out to them. You can uh, fill out an online uh, questionnaire and allow you to try out um, and start the recruiting process for, for some of these sports. I'm nearsighted. Does that disqualify me, disqualify me in any particular way? Again, so this is going to be identified when you do your medical examination, your physical exam. And so when you guys do do that, um, your physician will be able to make that assessment. And if Dodd Merb requests any additional documentation, that's where you're going to know whether you're qualified, disqualify, um, or request for more information. I would say dress professionally, um, unless they ask you guys to be in uniform. Um, just just dress dress professionally. It doesn't have to be a tuxedo, but um, look your best. You know. All right. So it is 9 p.m. right now. I'm going to take questions for another five minutes. Um, so send them now. I'm going to try to get through them. And if you guys have any additional questions, you guys have my contact information right here. And you guys can send me an email. Or if it's urgent, you guys can text or call me. OK, if I'm 21. Can I still make it? Yes, as long as you don't show up to our day 23 years old. So you have to be 22 when you show up for our day. West Point, will I be there? So, yes, I work at West Point. Um, I'm not always there because I'm also on the road traveling to go see you guys. And so on the days that I'm at West Point, I would love to, to meet with you guys. So um, I'm in the admissions building, so just come, come visit if you guys are there. And if not, uh, Again, let me again. I'm just gonna look at where you guys are at. I'm gonna send out a shout out on my story of where I'm at. That way, I come visit you guys if you guys are in the area. All right, Victoria asks, what are some aspects that set West Point apart from ROTC and other military colleges? That is a great question. And so, like many of you guys know, um, West Point is it's a service academy it is a um, it's a full-time military experience um, ROTC at a civilian college um, it might not be you know uh, there will be aspects where it's you're gonna have the civilian aspect where you have time for yourself and uh, you'll probably end up taking military science classes um, maybe some field trainings on the weekends and throughout the summer but it's not going to be an everyday thing where you'll have formation for every hour of the day. Um, and there's certainly not uh, one that's better than the other. I think it's a different experience uh, that West Point as well as ROTC has to offer. Um, again, the academic curriculum that we have, we have a that we offer. I talked about earlier is that we have a lot of different military schools that a lot of the cadets end up going to. 
Um, and during the summers, they get an opportunity to go all around the world um, for free. And so that's not always the case at uh, different ROTC programs um, because there, there's funding that's involved with that. But I would encourage you guys to not only um, look at just the service academies, look at what other options are available. ROTC, OCS, um, junior military colleges, um, because it all offers their own experience and it's what you want to do and not what anyone else tells you you should do. The interviews that you do is going to be with field force representatives. Um, the nomination interviews are going to be with your congressional representatives. The difference between a second lieutenant and a first lieutenant is when you graduate from West Point, everyone will commission as a second lieutenant. Um, in about 18 months, you then get promoted to a first lieutenant and take on greater responsibility. I do have an Instagram. It's going to be long grade lessons. I'm going to put my tag here. That's my Instagram tag. If you've done ROTC already, like I mentioned earlier, is that uh, you have an opportunity to qualify for an additional nomination, the ROTC nomination, which your PMI can do for you. And um, I mean, being an ROTC, you get an opportunity to be exposed to different military events, um, the Army culture, the Army values, and so you'll have kind of more of an understanding once you get into West Point. And then the last question I'm going to take is, is there a chance to go to med school after West Point? Yes, there is. Um, med school is going to be one of the few schools outside of grad school that you can go directly to after graduating from West Point. Um, it's fairly competitive. About 2% of each class will usually end up going to med school. And it's not because there's a limit, but more so because... Um, when you guys start, there's usually about a hundred, hundred or so students that are interested in applying for med school by the end of the four years after taking all the classes, taking the MCAT, um, most students end up self-selecting themselves out or they change majors and, um, it comes down to about 20 or 25. So I do appreciate you guys coming out tonight uh, to watch this video, um, this live q and hope that it was helpful. If you guys did find that it was helpful, let me know down below so that it gives me feedback to do, to do this more. Um, this is my first time actually doing a live Q&A over YouTube, and um, I would actually prefer to talk one-on-one -on -one with you guys so I can better understand everyone's situation. But of course you guys know, I only have so much time in a day. So to be able to do something like this, um, I can, I can put out the information in, at a wider audience and I would really appreciate if you guys actually followed up with me, maybe in an email and then talk more about your, your story. Tell me more about yourself and then ask more of your questions. That way I can get to you guys individually and be able to talk to you guys and answer your questions. So um, really appreciate you guys. Hope that you guys continue to um, push forward on your application. Um, continue to be confident, proactive, and just get ahead of it. And um, if there's anything that is on your mind at all whatsoever, just let me know and I'll do my best to answer your questions. So this video is going to be, um, you can watch it again. It's going to be on my YouTube page. If you want to learn more about West Point, I've had previous videos on my YouTube. You can check out my Instagram, Long Grade Lessons. I also, I'm actually most active on there, and I post a lot of educational content on there as well. But um, it was great. 
great getting to talk to you guys. It's been such a pleasure. I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.